Welcome back to the third tutorial. This is Mark Gingrass teaching you how to use basic R commands and how to navigate the R Studio a little bit. Now, if you're just coming in, we already have a project file open with an R Markdown file here. We're going to disregard that for now anyway, so let's hit the little X on it and close it out. As you can see, it's still in your bottom right hand side where the files are. It is under the RMD file. If you click on that, it will reopen and appear like magic. But we're not going to mess with that right now. Let's get it out of the way. Let's play with the console again. Okay, we're back in the console and we have nothing in our global environment. And if you do and you want to start from scratch, hit that little broom button. It'll clear everything out. Okay, now in R, it's a statistical, it was built for statisticians back in the day. I don't know the whole history of it, but they deal with a lot of numbers. And when you deal with a lot of numbers and big data, you deal with usually matrices. Everyone should kind of have a feeling for what a matrix is. Think of it as a spreadsheet full of numbers. So you have rows and you have columns and you have numbers in every single um, cell, just like a Microsoft Excel file would. Now picture this, a column of that spreadsheet or of that matrix going downward, that column can be considered what I would call a vector. If you just extracted one column of a matrix or of a spreadsheet, you highlighted the entire column and you said, give me that, that is a useful object. In R, we're going to consider that a vector. It's basically a string of numbers or bits of text, but not a combination of both. The power of R is that most of these functions can use a vector directly as input, which really simplifies coding in many applications because you avoid using for loops. So imagine I wanted to take a vector of numbers, let's say um, the first column of a matrix that might be a thousand numbers in a row, and I wanted to multiply them by two. Well, the old fashioned way, or the other programming language way, is to run a loop and iterate through each and every single number and multiply each number by two and restore it and things like that. So with R, you can typically just take, take the entire vector and say, multiply the vector by two, done. Anyways, we'll walk, we'll walk through some of the internals of that as we progress through. First, let's assign a vector to a variable. We're gonna call this number one. And remember the assignment is the less than dash. You can actually use an equal sign too, but it's preferred to use the less than dash as to not get it confused with the equality or the equivalent or the um, is something actually equivalent to something else. Does number one equal equal in some languages? You'd use double equals to say, hey, don't assign this, just see if they're the same. Anyways, number one equals. Now we're going to use uh, this letter lowercase c open parenthesis, and as you can see that it closes the parenthesis for me, yours should as well. If it doesn't, shoot me a message and I'll walk you through how to fix that. It's in the settings. Now, this C stands for, just like I said in Excel, column. It's, it's like a column of numbers. So think of it as a vector or a column. And we're gonna put numbers in there. We're gonna separate them by commas, like a comma separated value maybe. So like maybe the number one, four, or one, three, four, seven, 10, 11, whatever we want to put in there. These happen to be all integers. Now remember, we're in the console. You can just hit the enter button. Boom. Now you'll see in your values up here in your global environment, number one, the, the variable called number one takes on the values. You see some of this notation is a little bit confusing. It takes on the values of num, which is a numeric, one colon seven, what does that even mean? It's actually one through seven memory slots, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's seven numbers are stored into number one as a vector, just like that C, the column. So if you count them across, you'll have seven elements of this vector. Now, I said we can do basic arithmetic, but we can also put that entire number one into functions, like a function like sum. Normally you would do sum two plus, or two comma two, and it would give you four. Sum three comma 
five, it should give you eight. Now, you can also do three comma five, four comma five, and it'll give you the answer. Wow, that's pretty cool. In other languages, you'd have to actually define if you had three parameters coming into the function, you'd have to define that separately, then two parameters or one parameter, et cetera, et cetera. But luckily, R takes in columns of numbers and it gives you back results. Almost everything in R that you're going to come across, you have to kind of think of it as columns of numbers, even if it's just one single number. It'll really help you kind of internalize what's going on. So let's do a sum. Instead of putting in an actual number, we're going to put in our variable called number one. And I hit enter on that and it sums them up to be 40. You can count them and double check that it does. Uh, 21, 25, 27, close enough, 40. Okay, so that's cool that we can do that. We can also do number one times two and look what will happen now. It actually doubled the numbers, two, six, eight, 14, 20, 22, eight. Pretty cool, you can see the old numbers here still. So it did double them. Now, if I type in number one again, you'll notice that they're not doubled. Interesting. Here's why. You didn't assign the doubled number to anything. If you hit the up arrow on your keyboard, it'll bring back the last uh, command that you've done. Number one, hit up again, it'll go back uh, as far as you want. Just hit, keep hitting the up button. Little shortcut method. Hit up twice or get to the point where I did number one times two, and this time, we're going to assign it, and we're going to assign it back to itself, number one. Now, before I hit enter, I want to show you that remember that the right-hand side of the assignment operator, the right-hand side is evaluated first, and then it assigns it to the left-hand side. So you don't have to worry about, well, that's a weird assignment. I can't assign it to itself. Well, it doesn't. In memory, it's actually making copies and doing all kinds of things. So number one, it's going to take the number one vector or column of numbers, multiply each one by two, and then it's going to assign that entire vector to a new variable called number one. And number one will be a vector. Now look also before you hit enter, that number one up here with the one, three, four, seven, it will all double in just a second. I hit enter and they're doubled. So now, number one, enter, they are definitely doubled. Now, of course, R comes standard with statistical things like if you want to take the mean of number one, it'll give you the mean, which is the average. Now, let me give you another shortcut. When you start typing in a variable or common things in R, you can hit the tab and it'll autocomplete. So if I want to type in number one again, I can just type in N-U-M or, and then hit the tab button and it pulls up a list. Uh, number one is what I want, and you just hit enter that way. It's very simple. Normally, you would type in enough that if you hit the tab, that that's the only option, and you hit tab, and it just fills the rest in for you. Again, you can do things like length of the actual number one, and length will give you the, how many elements are in that vector. And if you're coming from a different language, you might have called it an array, but in my head, for some reason, an array to me is a continuous set of numbers from left to right instead of a column of numbers. So I don't want to confuse anybody that way. And an array in most languages is going to be a continuous set of memory that are contig contiguous. I'm not 100% sure how that works in R, but they probably have something very similar to it. Finally, uh, you can do things like commute Cumulative sum. I cannot say that word. So cum sum, number one, it'll give you the cumulative, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. And there's a list of things you can do with that number one. You can find minimum, you can find max, you can find the unique values. Now we didn't really go over what this, what I'm actually doing here, like unique, max, Community of sum, length, those are all functions that take an input. That input is the number one right now. So um, inside the parentheses, it's an input to a function called unique. But unique is internal to R and it's part of the R language. So we don't really have to know the internal workings of it at this point. One other useful one is sort. And if you sort number one, it'll sort it um, by default. Um, 
lowest to highest. Now what we can do is we can do sort and do number one. And then what you'll see is this little pop-up, I didn't touch anything, that yellow, and I'll zoom in on it on the video. It says sort, open parenthesis, x, comma, decrease, equals false, comma, dot, dot, dot. That's a lot in one take, so we're gonna, we're gonna break this down to just the x and the word decrease and equals false. The rest we'll, we'll cancel for now. But number one is the x. It's saying, hey, sort takes in parameters. One parameter is a, a data, a set of data. And that data that we're bringing it in, the function is calling it x to give you an idea of, hey, x, my data. Our data is contained in the variable number one. So we're gonna put that in that slot, the X slot. It's in order in this case. Comma, if I put a comma in there, and actually if I hit tab with the comma in there, it'll actually bring up the parameter listings. And this decrease and equals false, we're gonna go down and it's gonna give you an example of what that means. Should the sort be increasing or decreasing for the rate right X method, da da da. So it's a really helpful tip. And I'm gonna hit enter on that. I'm gonna type in true. Now when I hit enter, it's, it's going the other direction. So whenever you have a function and there's multiple parameters, you can get hints by doing those techniques. For example, uh, maybe we wanna do a round of, so round number, we're gonna round some number and see how this one has something similar. It says round x comma digits equals zero. So the default is digits equals zero. We can override the default by saying, digits, and again, you can hit the tab key and learn how to do all that stuff, digits equals two, hit enter, we have two digits after the decimal. Digits equal three, we have three digits after the decimal. Again, you can start typing in round, and once you hit that parenthesis, that little yellow box pops up, at this point, you can also hit the tab button, and it'll give you the parameter values. The order doesn't matter if you type in x equals and digits equals, digits equals three, and now I'm gonna make x equal some number, that's fine. But when you start doing things like without the x, you're going to run into problems. So the order only matters when you're going out of order. So make sure that you understand that concept. I think this will wrap it up, and I'm sorry I did not get to the R notebook, but the next lesson I should. I hope this video was useful, and if it was, leave a comment below, let me know how, and also subscribe. That'll help me grow my channel and continue creating videos like this.